More than a half of the world's population lives today in urban areas. It can be said that nowadays, cities are human habitats. As habitats, cities are the environment for finding food, protection, companionship, and water. Many of our initial settlements developed because the rivers welcomed them. Rivers were our hosts. But when did we start to menstruate our hosts? I come from Blumenau, a city founded by German immigrants and the cultural melting pot that is called Brazil. A city surrounded by nature, with beautiful rural and urban landscapes. The city began and grew economically precisely because of the river, which provided water, energy, and transport. Soon, the population discovered that the river was also a place for enjoyment. I can only imagine how nice it was to meet friends at such a beautiful place, near the water and among nature. After years of abandonment, this is a picture of what it looks like now. Many rivers and streams went through similar processes. The importance of the rivers was forgotten. Since the rivers were not on people's minds anymore, nobody cared about them. The quality of the water and of nature's conditions were not a concern. Development of the city demanded energy and more land for streets and buildings, so the rivers started to be straightened, walled in, and buried out of view. Although we have access to such rich and beautiful natural wonders near urban centers, and even within the downtown area, to ignore the natural shape of the rivers is today considered absolutely normal. And the constrained and stifled river is even held as a symbol of local beauty. So it's about the model we chose, the kind of river we appreciate and interact with or not. But what kind of choices are available to us? Life in the city is full of bad levels, depression, pollution, stress. Why are people so sad? Happiness is equated with the efficiency of mobility and urban planning reduced to controlling traffic lights and finding the shortest route between A and B. Width of avenues and height of buildings are still equated with modernity for society at large. We are living in cities and yet ultimately ignoring the big question, in what kind of cities do you want to live? In a time when diversity, culture and sustainability are hot topics, how can our cities reflect those values? And what is the shape of the city that matches the aspirations of our times? Those questions have surfaced in my mind since I was an architecture student. Through research, I found out the concept of renaturation of rivers in Germany. I discovered a valuable article written by Walter Binder in which he explains the three objectives intended by renaturing the Isa River. Protection against floods, recovery of natural ecosystems, and more public spaces for leisure. In this sense, rivers are the solution to reconnect nature, people, and the city. From then on, I started to notice the model that we are still following in several cities, that is, straighten and contain rivers, is an out-of-date approach in Germany. And how do we begin creating real alternatives for better cities? First, people need to want the development to follow a different path. My partner and I started online discussions and interventions such as to invite citizens to discover the unknown riverscapes from the banks and from the inside out. Today, I live in Germany as part of the German Chancellor Fellowship supported by the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation. My work concentrates on river cities. It's interesting to observe how they represent their times. Just like in the industry where everything is predictable, segmented and functional, so are the cities that developed within that zeitgeist. 
The cities become separated in four functions, work, dwelling, transport, and recreation, all in the scale of machines. In the Rua region, the rivers followed the same path. Each one had a specific task, and the Amsha had the function to take the sewage away. After the decline of the industries, the city of Essen is reinventing itself. The traces of mining and steel are living heritage. The city breathes art and is the green capital of Europe. At the center of this new approach is the river, going through a huge recovery process, including sanitation, citizen awareness, and creation of parks, making the city attractive again. In Munich, the Iser was called Wild, a river that had to be tamed. The river was channeled to serve immediate functional needs. Today, instead of confining rivers, the contemporary solution is to give back space for the river, providing flood control, biodiversity, and parks for recreation. Also, small streams have been recovered. We are leaving behind an outdated model based on artificial control and shifting towards adaptation and partnership with nature as an approach to a better life in the city. In today's modern society, life is dynamic. Our contemporary habitat, work, and relationships are more fluid than ever, flexible and unpredictable, just like the rivers and the nature. Rivers can shape the cities of our century. Besides theoretical and technical research, I've been producing easy-to-understand content from an urban planner's perspective all available online so that people can share ideas, references, and models. I found so much inspiration along the way that I even made a short video. Toda semana traz para a gente informações, curiosidades e bons exemplos do país dos nossos colonizadores. O slogan Cidade para Pessoas é um reconhecimento pelo processo que a cidade passou de recuperar sua vitalidade e atratividade através do desenho urbano e da retomada dos espaços públicos. As an architect, those places inspired me a lot. Recreate an old tradition makes the city more enjoyable. You can surf far away from the sea. A protection against floods can be a bike lane. Linear parks are true healthcare and true green mobility. Daylight rivers improves biodiversity and the microclimate in cities. Renaturation of streams makes new generations more aware. Public spaces belong to everybody, where people with different ages, cultures, and backgrounds can come together. I'm talking about diversity, but also about democracy. Like those, there are so many ideas suggesting ways to integrate rivers and cities. 
Urbanism, for example, is a mix of nature, technology, traditions, and feelings. As we try to humanize central areas with their own singularities and cultural heritage, rivers become an important piece in the equation. They can reconnect us with nature, ourselves, and our community. Consider this for a moment. Even modernity is fluid like a river. The world is not fixed anymore, so why should the riverbanks be? I see the city of the future being appropriated by its citizens. Technological advances will never replace the simplicity of public spaces. Cities are places for social life. Cities are places that should allow us to live within nature, not away from it. Cities are the greatest cultural artifact produced by humankind, and we can make our habitats more human by design. Thank you.